Hi everyone, my name is Haley Prosek and today I'm going to be talking to you about my project titled Exploring the Relationship of Adverse Childhood Experiences in Children and Youth with Developmental Disabilities. To give you a bit of context, Adverse Childhood Experiences, or ACEs, are the extremely stressful events that occur from birth to age 17. These events include things like exposure to any form of abuse or neglect, divorce, incarceration, parental mental health, parental substance use, or domestic violence in the household. Why they matter to public health is that we know that exposure to ACEs increases risk for poor health outcomes, such as chronic disease development and risky health behaviors. Ultimately, these can cause early death. Studies have shown that one in six children in the U.S. experience four or more ACEs, and any exposure to an ACE can have negative outcomes. However, four is where we start to see really severe negative consequences as a result of ACE exposure. Of particular concern, however, is that children with autism are two times more likely than a child without a disability to report four or more ACEs. This makes them a particularly vulnerable population requiring the attention of public health initiatives. Knowing this information, my applied practice experience sought to assess what interdisciplinary professionals know about ACEs and how they utilize that information as they work with children with developmental disabilities and their families. I carried out interviews with various professionals of different disciplines who work with children with developmental and related disabilities. I inquired about their familiarity with ACEs, if and how they assess for ACE exposure, and how they utilize knowledge of ACEs in their everyday practice. From these interviews, the main takeaway was that professionals working with children with developmental disabilities and their families are aware of ACEs, and they find them extremely important in how they conduct their work. Understanding ACEs and their impact help them to have a more complete picture of the child and family. This then allows them to connect the family with more appropriate and comprehensive resources to mitigate the impacts of ACEs and improve outcomes. Although they understand ACEs, our sample identified that there are barriers to formally assessing for ACEs. Further discussion of these barriers to identify needs would be a promising next step to guide future public health initiatives on promoting positive childhood development and family resilience. Thank you for your time, and I want to especially thank my faculty advisors, Dr. Ann Harris and Dr. Maureen Durkin for their mentorship and support throughout this project. Here are my references.